because for me, it's something that is very significant. So that we discuss together and see, is it, is it the will of God that we should eat? So I'll ask um, before, before we start, consumption of pork and the believer. We've got laws which came in. It has always been an important question. Many people ask, can believers eat pork? And is it sinful to do so according to the Bible? Because we want to see, we want to see, because the Christians are using it based on the Bible. The Muslims are doing the same based on something. But if in the things that they do, they are Western, the animal they are running away from. So the clear point blank answer to these questions are yes and no, depending on what you want to choose. I said yes and no for specific strategic reasons. Believers are free to eat anything, chicken, pork, shrimp, seafood, meat, snails, vegetables, anything. There is nothing that is restricting us. So let us study the Bible. Let us go into the Bible. Don't get your blood hot yet. Don't, do not get your blood hot. We want to discuss. We want to see and understand. So the question is, can believers eat pork? In the Old Testament, God gave dietary laws to Israel. The 613 laws that were given in the Old Testament were not for us, it was given to the Jews. They were selected as a holy nation, as a kingdom, as a priestly kingdom unto God, not to the, to the Gentiles. That time we referred as dogs. Remember the woman that came before the Lord said, why would I give the food that is meant for kids to the dogs? We were referred as animals because we did not know God. It's only an animal which does not know. They have got a creator. When you read Isaiah chapter one, verse three and four, they say, Israel, <laughs> a sinful nation, they have rejected me. Even a donkey knows, they, they know that they should come back home. You don't know a sinful nation where the Lord was rebuking Israel through prophet Isaiah. So these laws, let us make it very clear. They were not given to the Gentiles. They were given to the Israelis, to the Jews, to the Hebrews. So these are dietary laws which were given to Israel. We are going to, we are going to check the scriptures. We may differ on the interpretation. That's why I say, remember, he did not give them to everybody. He did not give them to everybody. Because the people are coming. If somebody, there's a Bible verse, there are Bible verses. We say, if somebody does not want to eat, don't give them. Don't give them. If I know somebody is coming, visiting me, of course, I ask through courtesy what somebody is eating or not taking. Dada Chimi, can you read for me Leviticus chapter 11, verse 7 and 8? Praise God. Leviticus chapter 7. I read chapter 11, verse 7 and 8. I read. Amen. And the swine, though he divided, though he divided the hoof. Uh, just, 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 can, can, can you start from two, please, two to eight? Let's, let's go a little bit big, uh, a little bit back. Okay. The same Bible verse, Leviticus 11 from verse 2, because we want to get a fairer understanding of what the Bible is telling us. Yes, sir. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which Yesha eats among all the beasts that are on the earth. Just wait, just, 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 just wait. Speak. And to the children of Europe, Israel. Speak unto the children of Africa, Israel. Speak unto the children of America, Israel. Good. 
start from one and see who was talking. We want to know who was talking. Who is talking here? Yes, Chairman. Praise the Lord. You can proceed. Amen. Okay, let's start from this one. Okay, I'll start from verse 1. Leviticus chapter 11, I read from verse 1. And the Lord spoke unto Moses and to Aaron, saying unto them, Speak who, unto the who, children who speak, of Israel. Who speak unto say, Moses and Aaron? Who was speaking here? The Lord. Good. So we agree God was speaking. Let us go now. Two, speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Whatsoever parted the hoof and is cloven footed and cheweth the cord among the beasts that shall ye eat. That shall ye eat. Nevertheless, these shall ye not eat of them that chew the cord or of them that divide the hoof as the camel. Because he cheweth the cord, but divided not the hoof. He is unclean unto you. And the honey, because he cheweth the cord, but divided not the hoof. He is unclean unto you. And the hair, because he cheweth the cord, but divided not the hoof. He is unclean unto you. And the swine, though he divide the hoof, and be cloven footed, yet he cheweth not the cord, he is unclean to you. Eight. Of, amen. Of their flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcass shall ye not touch. They are unclean to you. That's nine. Amen. No, we eight. just wanted up to eight. We just so first year, let us agree. God was speaking to his servant. Moses was as God to Aaron. Aaron was like a prophet to Moses. Now God is speaking to these two and he's telling the Israelis, the Jews, the Hebrews. I wanted to make it very clear. He was talking to the children of Israel. The 613 laws, remember when they, they rejected Samuel the prophet, when God said, it's not me, it's not you they are rejecting. When he became sorrowful, he said, it is me they are rejecting. Because everybody else was saying, who is, who is your king? Who is your president? They said, ah, it's God. Because during that time, if you call, if you ask the church, they all come together. If you ask for the nation of Israel, they will all come together. Because that's how God wanted them to be a royal priesthood, which Apostle Paul said in first, um, Peter chapter 2, verse 9, royal priesthood. This is what God had called them to be. So I just wanted to, to make it to make us very clear. Why is it important? It was God speaking. And he said, speak unto the children of Israel. We need to understand certain things here. Even when the Lord Jesus Christ himself came, he said, I came for the Jews, but there are sheep which are not of this fold, which I will bring into the fold. So you must, we must understand that's why I said we are now using the law of interpretation. We are now using the law of interpretation because we want to know. Uh, Evangelist Vivian, I want you to read Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 1 to 4. Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 1 to 4. Sister Sonia, if you are here, I want you to read from verse 5 to 8. Deuteronomy chapter 14. One to what, sir? One. Uh, evangelist, you are starting from one to four. Okay. Sister Sonia from five to eight. Okay. Deuteronomy 14, from verse one, I read in Jesus' name. Ye are the children of the Lord your God. Ye shall not cut yourselves, nor make any badness between your eyes for the dead. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. And the Lord has chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all the nations that are upon the earth. Three, thou shalt not eat any abominable thing. These are the beasts which ye shall eat, the ox, the sheep, and the goats. Amen. 
Hey, Amy, can you take can you take it again? I want to do this guess now. Okay. I um, want to see who is talking here. Okay. I read again. Mm -hmm. Ye are the children of the Lord your God. Ye shall not cut yourselves. Just, make... just okay. can you stop? You are the children of the Lord your God. Which people are we talking about here? Do we know which people God is talking about? Second. Are we talking about the people from Zimbabwe that you are the children of the Lord your God? No. Okay, proceed the next verse and see. We want to get an idea who is God talking about. Okay. Okay, I read. Ye shall not cut yourselves, nor make any badness between your eyes for the dead. Two. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God, and the Lord has chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all the nations that are upon the earth. Three, thou shalt not eat any abominable thing. Four, these are the beasts which ye shall eat, the ox, the sheep, and the goats. Amen. Amen, Sister Sonia. Is she here? Sister Sonia? Dada Jimmy? Yes, sir. Can you read for us, please? Oh. Yes, sir. From verse 5 to 8, we are reading Deuteronomy chapter 14. We are discussing a topic which we said, can a believer eat pork? So we want to go into the scriptures and see who God is talking to. And the argument is these laws were given to Israel. They were not given to everybody else. Because you are, he's saying here, you are a holy nation, where evangelist um, just read now. He said, the Lord God is chosen to be his treasured possession out of all the peoples on the face of earth. So he's talking to a particular people. How do we know? Do we, do we still argue that he was talking to the Jews here? We want to see. We are not, we are, when I conclude it, I will leave it to the individual. Like I said, we don't micromanage what somebody eats, what somebody does not eat because it's very important to make an informed decision using the scriptures. Until we cross this here, that's why I'm saying read it again, read it again. We will come to the New Testament and start seeing again, where is this thing coming out from? And then what do we conclude? Then we can make a conclusion. You can start from five, please. Amen. I read in Jesus. The heart and the real book and the Follow deer and the white goat and the pigang, the pigang, and the white horse and the camels, and every beast that patheth the hoof and cleaveth and cleft into two claws and cheweth the coat among the beasts that ye shall eat. Nevertheless, these ye shall not eat of them that chew the good or of them that divide a cloven hoof as the camels and the herd and the corny, for they chew the good, but divide not the hoof. Therefore, they are unclean unto you. And the swine, because it divided the hoof, yet cheweth, yet cheweth not the good, it is unclean unto you. Ye shall not eat of their flesh, nor touch their dead carcass. Amen. Amen. So when the Lord Jesus Christ came and he died on the cross, he didn't just die for our sins. He fulfilled the Old Testament law. He fulfilled all the laws against unclean food as well. All laws were fulfilled. All laws. Can we have all microphones shut, please? 
we are having a very important discussion because at times we will talk, we don't know. But when we go into the Bible, we check the scriptures. If it is inconclusive, if people have heard other Bible verses, they can bring it, we start discussing. But we wanted to know, if you want to eat, can we have all microphones closed, please? All, every microphone. Check your microphone and get it closed. Until I ask for a Bible verse to be written, to be read out, that's, that's when you can open. It's an important discussion. I do not want anything to be met, to be missed out. So when the Lord died on the cross, he did not just die for our sins. He also fulfilled. Remember in Matthew chapter 5, when he was talking to the, to the Pharisees, he said, I did not come to abolish the law, but I came to fulfill it. Heaven and earth shall pass, but my word shall not pass. So he fulfilled the law, Old Testament law. He also fulfilled the laws against unclean food. We are going to check it through the scripture. It's not an emotional thing, like I said. If somebody comes, if somebody comes and says, ah, why are you, it does not make you unclean. Everything we are talking about is supported by scripture. Don't say if this one is not eating, this one is eating. We know people who don't eat pig, but their behavior is worse than that of a pig. We know people who eat pig, but their behavior is also as good as close to righteousness. Evangelist cake. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 15 to 16. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 15 to 16. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 15 to 16. I read in Jesus' name. Amen. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandment contained in ordinances for the for to make in himself of twin one new man, so making peace, verse 16, and that he might reconcile both go, unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. Amen. Amen. So the Bible is very clear. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in the ordinances. It's referring to the, not the Ten Commandments, they were part of the 618 laws. He said it did not come to abolish, but to fulfill. He came to fulfill so we need to understand, we are still going to read other Bible verses and see. Then we will open it up for every one of us now. If you've got questions, if you've got a Bible verse, bring them. There's a microphone which is open, please. So let's bring it and see. We're trying to make up a case, but we don't bring up. the Chimi, can you close the microphone, open the microphone? Please. So we don't come up with a doctrine by one Bible verse. We are going to be bringing Bible verses. We check them together and we see, is it true? We are now using the law of interpretation, even according to Isaiah chapter 28, verse 10, precept upon precept, verse upon verse. Let us see, is the Bible agreeing with itself? Yes, that is the position we're going to. Remember the, king, the things of God is not about emotion. We need to understand. It's very important for you to understand. Because if you come in and just say, ah, don't eat this, or just come, you're putting in this place of your material, you need to go into the Bible. Take somebody on that journey, build up your case. If, even if you claim you are a Christian, but with this which you are carrying, because nothing unholy shall enter into this place, then you are making your case to somebody. But coming to condemn or so, we have got preferences. When I say preferences, because of the traditions, because in the manner in which we grew up, like my own mother, she never ate pork. She never ate, even though it was my favorite. She never ate. She did not even want to see it or smell it. So we have got these preferences 
where some members of the family, they don't eat it at all. So these are preferences because that's how they grew up. That's how we grew up. So you can see the differences. At times, the way we grow up is the one that determines the next course of life which we take. Mama D. Galatians chapter 3, verse 23 to 26. Galatians chapter 3, 23 to 26. Mama D. 3, 23 to 26. I read in Jesus' name. Yeah. Galatians 3, verse 23 to 26. But therefore faith comes. We were kept under guide by the law, kept for the faith which could afterwards be revealed. Therefore, the law was our tutor. You may. And offer. Sorry about that. 26. For you, you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many as you were baptized into Christ, have put on Christ, there, there is either Jew nor Greek, there is either slave nor free, there is either female or male, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 So the Bible is very clear. The, the Bible is very clear. But before faith came, we were kept under the law. You know, faith is not talking about grace before it came. Not that it was not there before, but now it was more clear because the Lord Jesus Christ did not come to replace God. He came to show us a greater revelation of who God was. That is not a distant God. He said, shut up unto faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring unto Christ as unto Christ, that we must be justified by faith. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. Do we read, how do, how do we understand verse 24? Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. The law was to bring us unto Christ who went and nailed everything on the cross. That we must be justified by faith. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under the law. Praise the Lord. Am I building up a case here? I want us to see. I'm trying to build up a case. The Bible is very clear. I will repeat again so that we begin to see. I don't come with preferences. I don't come with a prescribed position. We go into the scripture and begin to see. It is the Bible that that is the standard that we use. Like I said, we don't come up with a we don't come up with a doctrine by one Bible verse. No, or two Bible verses. No, it's a perversion. The same thing that we are accusing others of doing is the same thing that we will be doing. So we need at least eight, 10, 12 Bible verses where we can say, oh, now we can understand. I'm trying to make up a case here. I'll read from a different, I think it's a King New King James Version. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. We are no longer under the law. For you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So we are trying to make a, we are trying to make up a case now. Hmm. We will come to what the Lord Himself said. We are coming. Um, let me. Is my daughter sister sufficient here? 
Is this sufficient? Ah, okay. Dada Helen, praise the Lord. Dada Helen, Romans chapter 10, verse 4. Romans chapter 10, verse 4. Romans chapter 10, verse 4. For Christ is the end of the law for right righteousness to everyone that believeth. Amen. This is one of the Bible verses that I really like in chapter 10, Romans chapter 10. It says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. These are people believers in the church. These are believers in the church. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted them unto righteousness of God. Now we begin to see, when we read 2 Corinthians chapter 5, from 17 to 21, he said, we made the righteousness of God in Christ. The Bible is very clear. If we want, we can go in, but I wanted to leave a bit of uh, room to be able to discuss so that we see what does the Bible say. Christ is the culmination of law so that there may be righteousness for all who believe. Let's go to what the Lord Jesus Christ said. Let's go to what the author of life said. I can see my son is here, Brother Joshua. If you have a chance, please, can you read for us Mark chapter 7, verse 18 to 19? Mark chapter 7, verse 18 to 19. Praise the Lord. Uh, Jimmy, can you step in, please? Mark chapter 7, verse 18 to 19. Yeah, wasn't there. Mark chapter 7, verse 18 to 19. Sorry, I was reading with my mouth, with my mouse muted, my mic muted. Okay, I, I, I just can... saw the lips moving. I, I thought you <laughs> were reading. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And he said unto them, Are ye so without understanding also? Do ye not perceive that whatsoever thing from without entereth into the man, it cannot defile him? Because it entered not into his heart, but into the belly, and goeth out into the drought, purging all meats. Amen. Amen. And he said, that which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man, for from within, out of the heart of the man, proceed evil thoughts. Adulterous, fornication, theft, covetousness, wickedness, lasciviousness. We can see this is God Himself talking. When you see everywhere where in this in the four Gnostics, the book of Matthew, Ma Mark, Luke, and John, everywhere where it's seen written in red, these are usually the words which were spoken by the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. So here he is saying, Are you so dull? Don't you see that nothing that enters a person can defy you? This is the Lord saying, for it does not go into their heart, but into their stomach, then out of the body. This is the Lord, he was declaring all foods clean. Is it true, Evangelist Vivian, I want you to read 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 8. 1 Corinthians, let's read with an open mind and see but we we'll leave it to an individual to decide whether they want to eat. Like I said, we don't come with the Bible verse 
one Bible verse is the perversion. First, First Corinthians, Corinthians eight eight. Okay, First Corinthians eight eight. I read in Jesus' name. But meat commended us not to God, for neither. If we eat, are we the better? Neither if we eat not, are we the worse? Amen. Good. Can you start, please, from 6 to 8 again? I usually want to say plus or minus so that we get a bigger, a better understanding. Okay. First Corinthians 8, I read from verse 6. But to us, there is but one God, the Father of whom, of whom are all things, and we in him. And one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom all, all things, and we by him. Seven. How be it, there is not in every man that knowledge, but some with conscience of the idol. Unto this hour, it is as a thing offered unto an idol. And their conscience, being weak, is defied. Eight. But meat commended us not to God. For neither if we eat, or we the better, Neither if we eat not, are we the worse. Amen. Amen. So here, Apostle Paul is making an argument. He said food will not make us unacceptable to God. If I don't eat, does it make me inferior to you that eat? Or if you eat, are you better than me? Are, are, are we getting the scriptures here? I, re I really want us to see. I'm trying to build up a case before we open it for discussion. Because it's very important. Like I said, we cannot come with one Bible first. Say the Bible said, the Bible said. This is Apostle, Apostle Paul, Paul Odakuka, the man who knew his law very well. This is the man is telling the Jews, are you any better that you don't eat pig? Because this way, the people say, no, this ones they are not human beings, they eat pig. He said, you that eat pig, you rejected the Messiah. You even nailed him on the cross. Are you any better than this ones? Where Apostle Paul was rebuking them in Romans chapter 2, I think 24 and 25, where he said, you who teach others, do you not teach yourself? You boast of having the law. It is written about you that God's name is being blasphemed among the Gentiles because of your behavior. Because they were boasting that the laws were given to us. That's why I wanted to make it very clear. Those laws were not given to the Gentiles. The laws were given to the Jews. That's why they were boasting. That scripture of a Messiah can only be fulfilled by a Jewish person. You have got to come through the Jewish. It cannot be a Russian. It cannot be a Messiah. A, a, a Messiah cannot be any other nationality. He had to come through the line of David. I hope I'm making a case now. We want to see what does the Bible say. If somebody's got the Bible verses, I want three, four like this. We build up a case and we see. Like I said, because it's a perfection, we cannot come and use one Bible verse. Apostle Paul is saying, but meat commended us not to God. He is making an argument. Food will not make us unacceptable to God. Food will not make us acceptable to God. We are not inferior if we don't eat. Neither are we superior if we do eat. We are trying to make up a case. Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10 is Sister Sonia Da. Sister Sonia. Yes, sir. Uh, Acts chapter 10. 10, verse 9 to 15. I want you to follow, to follow very closely. If it means okay. writing the Bible verses so that we will come back and discuss them. But if you have good argument, we will need also some Bible verses which we can quote. So I read in Jesus' name. Amen. Add 10 from 9. On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven open and a certain vessel descending unto him as it had been a great sheet, neat 
and the four corners and let down on the earth, wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, rise, kill. Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, what God had cleansed, that call, thou, call not thou common. Amen. Hey. Amen. This is God. I want Sister Sonia, can you go back to verse 12, please? Okay. Verse 12, I read. We are, in, we are all manner of four footed beasts all of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. Can you take it again? All manner of four footed beasts. Cows. Cows. Deer. Yeah, cows. Yes. Goats. Goats. Pig, everything. Pig. No, we want to see, because this is the Bible. We are trying to make up a case, right? He yeah. said he saw all manner of four-footed animals. So let's assume, because the pig was mentioned in the Old Testament in the two verses that we read, in Leviticus 11 and in Deuteronomy 14. We saw now the Bible, this is, this is Luke, the doctor who wrote this, um, the book of Acts. So now we say, where in where all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth. We have no reason to believe that the pig was not there. If somebody's got a Bible verse which, which is trying to talk, say something, it's okay. That Peter, Peter, he saw a pig among this animal. He saw a camel among these animals. Peter said, ah, he said, no, sir. He said, Mba. he rejected, he said, yeah. he said, Peter, why are you calling something that I have called one? See, can you read the 15, please? The 14 and 15. Okay. 14, I read. But Peter said, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spoke unto him again the second time. What God had cleansed, that call not thou common. Amen. So we come back again to Leviticus chapter 7, the one that you start from 1 to 7. And he said, in the pig, though it is undivided, a divided hoof does not chew the cut, it is unclean for you. You must not eat their meat or touch their carcasses, for they are unclean for you. This is what Apostle Peter, because why? He says in verse 14, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. So we see the pig is now there amongst listed among unclean animals, right? Brethren, are we together? Yes. Sir. I'm reading in Leviticus chapter 11, verse 7 and 8. We want to know, because when we are building up a case, we have got to take it from somewhere. This is Peter said, no. He said, sir, not so. I have never eaten anything that is unholy. And God is now rebuking me in verse 15. He said, what God is clean. That come not thou common. Call not thou common. We are, we are just trying to explore the scriptures here so that we know. Because if you come and tell somebody, say, do not eat. If you eat, you are going to help. If you do this, this issue is not about help. The issue is not about help. So here, yes, some people who are weak in the faith might not understand this. So you should be careful not to be divisive. That was the argument when evangelists uh, asked this question. So I'm very careful, evangelist. I'm very careful. You can see how I'm trying to trade here. I'm very careful. When we are coming with the scriptures, it's not like this one, one, this one, one, no. That's why I'm trying to bring up Bible scriptures so that from the Bible, we can see. It's not my opinion because it's not one Bible verse. If I bring one Bible verse, you say, oh, this is what Peter said. This was the Lord himself said, what you take inside does not defile you. It's what comes from inside. Remember prophet chapter 4, verse 23. Guard your heart with all due diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. 
with your heart you believe and with your mouth you confess. We can see when the Bible, when we start um, making this case now, we want to see what is the Bible saying? Because Peter said, I have never eaten anything that is impure. Do not call anything impure that God has made, made clean. God has made clean. Where was it made clean? Is it not what we read in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14 to, to, to 17 to 18? 15, 15 to 16, I think. That if it, where he said he nailed everything under the cross. We, we are trying to advance in argument. But I'm saying here, I'm very careful. Some people who are weak in their faith might not understand this. So we should be careful not to be divisive or to cause somebody to stumble. That's why I said yesterday, it was impressed upon me. I said, no, because if we let it go, somebody will say, ah, now I'm feeling bad. It does not make you any less holy. Apostle Paul said it in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 8. Does it make you unacceptable to God? He said, no, it does not make you inferior if you don't eat. And if you eat, it does not make you a better Christian. If you, if you do not eat, it doesn't make you bad. If you eat, it doesn't make you good. So food is being, yes, the, not the kind of foods that people are eating today, where we are buying maybe food, meat that is contaminated with human meat. So like I said, if the person that you are around will be offended, you should refrain from eating it. Evangelist Vivian is coming to Austria. We know that she and the family does not eat pork. We don't offer pork. Neither does my wife. My wife does not eat pork. I do eat. She does not eat. That's why I say it's a personal preference. She does not eat. I do. But I will not come and dictate what somebody does. Even my children, if they want, they eat. As for me, because I know the Bible, I understand my scriptures very well. So I have got a basis on sending on the scripture. Because I read through my Bible, these are the conclusions that I brought in. These are the conclusions that I have brought in for myself. So, you are, okay, if I can eat to God be the glory, do I have a basis to support my claim for eating pork? Then we'll see somebody who will say, okay, me, I think I should not eat because of this. If because you grew up not eating, it's still okay. It doesn't make you any day a, a, a bad person. So like I said, if you know you are inviting somebody who is a Muslim faith, who is a good friend of the family, because you are trying to lower him to come into Christianity, don't offer them something that will offend them. It's like if you give a group, because they are still holding to the 613 laws. That's why they cannot, that's why they stumble at these laws, because why James, James chapter 2 verse 10 condemns them. If you fail in one, you failed in all of them. You failed in all of them. Whereas the New Testament is with over 1,300 laws. Remember, even the Lord is saying, if you do not greet somebody to hate somebody, you have murdered. He came in and said, if, if you only greet people who greet you, what is the difference between you and the hypocrite? So these are new laws that we have brought in. So we need to understand, please. We are not coming up with a doctrine, but I want you to understand. If somebody's got a different scripture, to God be the glory. That that cheer me. Romans chapter 14, verse 20 and 21. Romans chapter 14, verse 20 and 21. I read Romans 14. 20 and 21. It is good neither to eat flesh, nor to drink wine, nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth, or is offended, or is made weak. Oh, 2020, sorry. For meat destroy not the work of God. All things indeed are pure, but it is evil for that man who eateth with offense. Then 21, it is good neither to eat flesh, nor to drink wine, nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth, or is offended, or is made weak. Amen. 
Uh, let us read um, from 17, where Apostle Paul was saying, this is one of the Bible verses I always quote from time to time. Read from 17 and bring it down. Bring it to 23. Okay, 17 down. I have therefore, I have therefore, whereof I may glory through Jesus Christ in those things which pertain to God. For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ hath not wrought by me to make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed. True mighty signs and wonders by the That's power. Uh, the, the me, where are you oh, reading this? Sorry. Oh. Because I see, I see something else. Oh, sorry. From 17. Romans chapter 14 from 17 to the last 23. 14, I read. No, no. Roman 14 from 17. 14. 14 from verse 17 to 23. Yeah. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. For he that is this. For he that in these things served Christ is acceptable to God and approved of men. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. For meat destroy not the work of God. All things indeed that's right, that's are for what? For what? For meat destroy for me. not the work of God. For fish? Meat. For pig? Pork? Yes, sir. Okay, let's read. For meat destroy not the work of God. All things indeed appear, but it is evil for that man who eateth with offense. It is good neither to eat flesh, nor to drink wine, nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth or is offended or is made weak. Has thou faith? Have it to thyself before God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in that thing which he alloweth. And he that doubteth is damned if he eats, because he eateth not of faith, for whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Amen. So we are trying to build up a case. The case we are trying to build, the Bible is very clear. It's saying, for me to destroy not the work of God. All things indeed are pure. We have seen some Bible verses which are pointing to the same thing. So we want to see in when we before we conclude, I'll just say from this Bible verses now. Now you know what it means. What does it mean to you? If it is agreeable to you, said okay. Now I think I know. Now I think I know. Then it's okay. If you don't want to, it's okay. It doesn't really matter. But we just wanted to go into the Bible and understand more from the Bible. This, the same Bible verse that we are reading here says, therefore, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 18. Therefore, if what I eat causes my brother or sister to fall into sin, I will never eat meat again. So I will not cause them to fall. If you give somebody, so, ah, that was, that was goat meat, they will not eat. They are affected already. They begin to doubt them. They become weak because they become sorrow. They become sad. So the Bible is warning us. You see, the Bible is trying to trade very carefully. This is sensitivity, spiritual sensitivity. Like I know, like um, our evangelist um, Vivian says, we don't eat, said, okay, good. So if I come and offer her this thing, I'm trying to provoke her. I'm trying to make her stumble because she has made the position very clear. So these are the things that I'm just saying. If you know that, because follow peace with all men. If you are not peaceable, then you are not of God. Because I really know that somebody is going to pick offense from it because you know I do not eat this kind of food. And you are giving it to me. 
What are you trying to achieve? So these are the things that when we look at some of these things, Romans chapter 14, where the Dachimi read, verse 18, it says something again. Let us not therefore judge one another anymore, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. The Bible is making us to understand something. Sister Sonia, can you read for me Romans? Can you read oh, this Romans? It's very interesting. I want I want you to read Romans 14, 14 to 16. Then um, uh, okay. Uh, Evangelist Vivian, I want you to read again Romans 14, 1 to 3. We want to spend okay. a bit of time. I read with you. Now. Amen. Romans 14, 14. I know and I'm persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him that estimates anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, now walkest thou not charitably. Destroy not him with thy meat, for whom Christ died. Hallelujah. Can you take that last part? Amen. Destroy not him with thy meat, for whom for Christ whom? died. You died for what? For, what? Hmm. for <laughs> whom Christ died. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm trying to make a case because you know, there is a law of interpretation. We are trying, we are working according to, there are laws of interpretation in interpreting the Bible. When I come in and just say, do not do this thing, you say, but why? So I, I cannot come with one Bible verse. I'm trying to make you see, ah, okay. If you don't eat, it's okay. That's your preference. That's your preference. But I'm just saying, do not come and be condemning people because they are eating. Because you don't, maybe you don't have the Bible scriptures. If you don't know the scriptures, probably it doesn't mean they are not there. That's why I'm trying to read a lot of scriptures so that we understand. At the end of the day, we must all understand that salvation is by faith in Christ alone. With the last part which Sister Sonia has read, read now, destroy not him with thy meat for whom Christ died for. Christ died for what? For salvation. And salvation is by faith in Christ alone. So meat will not play any role on anybody. Whether you eat or not, these are preferences. Like I said, that's what you prefer. That's how you want it. And nobody can come and tell you. The same thing I just said, salvation is not a group responsibility. It's not a group responsibility. You will take responsibility for what you want. How you do it. Evangelist Fifian, Romans 14, 1 to 3, please. Romans 14, 1 to 3. Okay. Romans 14. One to three. Okay. One to three. Mm -hmm. I read in Jesus' name. Him that is weak in the faith, receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. For one believeth that he may eat all things, another who is weak eateth herbs. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not. <laughs> and let not him which eateth not judge him. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm saying this, sir. <laughs> okay, this well. This, no, well. You can take it again. I, I wanted you to read that part. Okay, so sir. Good. I take again. Mm -hmm. Romans 14, 1 to 3. Him that is weak in the faith, receive here, but not to doubtful disputations. 
For one believeth that he may eat all things, another who is weak eateth herbs. Three, let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not, and let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth, for God hath received him. Amen. Amen. So we just saw that the chin is smiling. <laughs> it is well. <laughs> it is well. <laughs> Because this, this is what I'm saying. When we look into the Bible, we use the law of interpretation. Instead of coming and say, don't do this one. There are people who are not strong in faith. They will come and condemn rubbish everybody who's doing these things. And when you bring type of verses like this, you say, oh no, oh no. So you may cause somebody to stumble. That's why I said people you need, that's why I said you need, one needs to be discipled before they start going out there and start accusing or rubbishing somebody. It is not like something like beer where I can bring you up to six Bible verses, where you say, if you drink beer, oh yes, we don't come with one and condemn you. So we need to be careful. We are, we are, we are laughing because we are beginning to see what is the mind of God. So at the end of the day, we must all understand that salvation by faith is by faith in Christ alone. Meat has got no rule to play. Dada Helen, Galatians chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. Sister Sonia, I want you to read Galatians chapter 3 from verse 4 to 6. Then we open for you. Galatians chapter 3, Amen. verse 1 to 3. I read in Jesus' name. Amen. Have you suffered so many things in vain? If it be, if it be yet in vain, he therefore uh, where, 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 where are you reading? Galatians 3, 4. No, 3, you start from 3, from 1 to 3. The, the other okay. part is Sister Helen will read. From 1 to 3. Yes, please. I just start from one to three. Yes, from all foolish Galatians. Oh, foolish Galatians. Mm -hmm. Oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been crucified among you? Would I learn of you? Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are ye so foolish? Have you begun in the spirit? Are you now made perfect by the flesh? Amen. That I Helen. Number four. Yes, please. If ye suffered, suffered so many things in vain, if it, it be. It, if it be yet in vain. We are reading from four to six. Okay, sorry. Mm -hmm. It therefore that Mrs. Strayed Stray, Stray, Stray to you to you the spirit and worketh miracle among you. Doth he it he it be the works of the law, or by the hearing of the faith. Even as Ibrahim believed God, and he he was accounted to him for righteousness. Amen. Amen. I want to read with in the NIV. We use if you want for simpler understanding, but the meaning must be the same. You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Before your very eyes, the Lord Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. I would like to learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the spirit by the works of law or by believing what you heard? Are you so foolish after beginning by means of the spirit? Are you now trying to finish by means of the flesh? Have you experienced so much in vain? If it was really in vain. So again, I ask you. Does God give you his spirit and work miracles among you by the works of the law or by your belief in what you heard? 
so also Abraham believed God and was credited to him as righteousness. I want to take the one that um, evangelist read. The weak and the strong. Romans chapter 14, verse 1 to 3. Accept the one whose faith is weak without quarreling over the disputable matters. One person's faith allows them to eat anything. But another whose faith is weak eats only vegetables. This is the Bible. We are not reading Quran here. We are not reading Book of Buddha. We are reading the Holy Scriptures. This is the Holy Bible talking about this thing. Inspired by the Holy Spirit. When you read 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 20, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1, 120 to 22, it's the Bible, God is speaking here. The one who eats everything must not treat with contempt the one who does not. And the one who does not eat everything must not judge whom does, for God has accepted them. Why is the Bible, why is the Bible making us very clear? That's why I was saying, when we go out to talk to people, we, we must be spiritually sensitive, very sensitive. Because at times we come, at times we come, we just tell, we just talk anyhow, we tell somebody you are condemned, you are being condemned. There are some Bible verses I just want to, to repeat so that we know, especially the one that we, Apostle Peter was trying to argue. He says, sir, I said, this thing, I have not eaten it. Peter was disputing with God. Peter was disputing it with God. Why was he disputing? The Bible says, about noon the following day, as they were on their journey approaching the city, Peter went up on the, on the rooftop to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat. While the meat was being prepared, he fell into a trance. Sister Helen, a trance is when you see an open vision. We just, you just see like this, like you get like a sleep. You see things with your eyes closed. He saw heaven opened and something like a large sheet being let down to earth by its four corners. It contained all kinds of four, all kinds of four-footed animals. We know and reptiles. Next were there, crocodiles, <laughs> vultures. All those things were there. Then the voice said, kill, get up, Peter, kill and eat. This is the Holy Spirit who is telling you, Peter, get up, kill. Is it true is the Holy Spirit who was talking? Yes. Let us go to, to the second book of Peter, chapter one. We want to know whether it's true or not. Sister Sonia, second Peter chapter one, verse 20 and 21. We want to know whether it's Holy Spirit speaking. We we'll still go to the book of uh, Timothy and see whether this book is coming from God. If yes, why would we not accept it? Second Peter chapter one verse four. But no, one twenty and twenty one. Okay, one verse twenty and twenty one. Yes. I read in this one. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God speak as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. As they were moved by CHMI? The Holy Ghost. As they <laughs> the were Holy moved Ghost. by the Catholic? No. As they the were Holy moved by? The Holy Ghost. Good. So we understand now that this oh, book is inspired by the Lord. This is the Holy Spirit saying, Peter, kill and eat. Peter said, Mba, say, sir, I cannot eat all. God said, why do you call something impure that God has made clean? Remember, we read Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14 and 15 and 16. Let, I'm trying to put another Bible verse um, so that we see from the different scriptures. You know, when, when, when I'm doing the Bible studies, what I do is I take... Um, different Bible versions and deep, different Bible verses so that we understand. He said, by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations, his purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, that's making peace, in one body to reconcile both of them to God through 
the cross by which he put to death their hostility. Remember before it was talking about the schoolmaster. It was talking about the schoolmaster. The law was a schoolmaster. So the Bible is being very clear. So at times, I do not want us to read only one part so that because if we do it, we may not understand the whole picture. Galatians chapter three, he said, the law was a schoolmaster. I want to try and check with um, NIV. Let's check with the NIV. I'm trying to read different Bible verses so that we understand. Then we'll get some questions and we are done. So, oh, praise the Lord. Before the children, he's talking about the children of God. Before the coming of this faith, we were held in custody under the law. Locked up, we were held in custody. They were in jail under the law. Locked up. When you are put in prison, you are locked up. I want you to start to understand it in this way. Until the faith was to come, would be revealed. So the law was our guidance until Christ came, that we may be justified by the faith. Now that this faith has come, we are no longer under that guidance. So in Christ Jesus, we are now children of God through the law. It is just talking about the schoolmaster. So we'll open it for some questions, contributions, if it has happened, if it has um, deepened our understanding, because for me it was very important that we, we try to discuss using the Bible and see from if somebody has got a different scriptures, please, I want us to see all of us. So that we understand, is the Bible very clear about what we are talking? Do we have contributions? Can Christians eat pork now? Dadachimi, can you eat your pork without thinking you're sinning before God? You are muted. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. God bless you. <laughs> yes, I I thank God. I'm so I I I'm like, whoa, I'm so happy for this session. God, I just thank God. Yeah, I just have not, I don't have an a contradicting scripture. I just have a supporting one that have guided me somehow. Yeah, I believe God is having mercy upon us. So the same Peter, the Lord, Peter was able to now tell others to go ahead, see there's liberty. This is now what liberty means. Pastor, when you met our sister, when you read the place, you read, do not cry. I said, this is what liberty is. When I said, we now have liberty in Christ. No liberty to go and say, no liberty to, but liberty. Now, if the person is saying eating is, they eat, they are not condemned, fine. If don't condemn, I feel, thank you for that scripture. God bless you, man of God, Pastor Jeff, God bless you. So the place I have is the uh, Acts of the Apostles chapter 15. Um, I'm going to read it quickly. Just bear with me and I will hand over. Acts 15, I'll read from verse 5. 5, that scripture, that portion have helped me. So after um, they, there was a contention and I take verse 5. 15, 5, okay. Aside from verse 5. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. That means all the things that we are reading, this clean, this unclean, these are all the laws, so they were required to do all those. Verse 6, and the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. And when there came, and when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up. Peter, that the Lord said, Peter, kill and eat. The Lord showed him. So he was convinced. He said, no, Lord, I eat. I don't eat any. Peter, have, the Lord have already had mercy on him. And now Peter rose in the spirit, I believe, and said unto them, men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us, that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, which knoweth the heart, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. Now I read from verse, I take from verse 18. None 
unto God are all his works from the beginning of the end. So now taking it back to when the Lord gave that, those um, laws, someone will say, is it not the Lord that said, don't, it don't, like, what is this? The Lord contradicting himself. No, he says that there are things we don't understand in the scripture. We leave it to the Lord. And verse 18 said, none unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. Wherefore, my sentence is that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to God, but that we write them, we write unto them that they abstain from pollution of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. For Moses of old time hath in, their, in every city them that preached him, being read in the snuggles every Sabbath day, now 22. Then Please, it's the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, name the Judas, so name Barnabas and Silas, chief men among the brethren. And they wrote letter by them after this manner. So this is the letter now. I'm going to read this, the letter they wrote to them because they were contention now. Now, these are just the people that didn't know which one is, they don't even know which one is like me. I didn't know which one is cleaner. It's just reason I'm knowing it. But I've known the Lord. I had that Jesus saved. I went and baptized and I've been eating. I didn't know. So I see myself here. Now, someone, they are coming and telling us, you cannot do this. You need to wear it. You need to do it. You need to do it. You need to eat. You can't eat it. You can't stand it. Gonna... Now they are like, what do I do? I don't understand this thing. Now, the letter epistle, the epistle they wrote, verse 23. And they wrote letters by them after this manner. The apostles and elders, brethren, sent greeting unto the brethren, which are of the Gentile in Antioch and Syria and Cilicia. For as much as we have had that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words, subverting your souls, saying, they must be circumcised and keep the law to whom we gave no such commandment. It seemed good unto us being assembled with one accord to send chosen men and unto you with our brethren, with our beloved Barabbas and Paul, men that have hazarded their lives for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 28, I'm reading now. For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that ye abstain from meats offered to idols and from blood and from things strangled and from fornication, from which if ye keep yourselves, ye shall do well. Fare ye well. So the Lord, the Lord, they come, Jesus Christ didn't come to destroy the law. It is, it is a final rancor. Jesus said, "Thou shalt not commit adultery." That's the law of Moses. But Jesus said, "If you look, so there is even is not on us that the love of God is constraining us to even strive higher for higher, serving the Lord with our hearts and in our mind and our soul." God bless you, Pastor Jeff. That scripture, I'm gonna read it again. That place that made everyone laugh, Evangelist. <laughs> we laugh so much. Yeah, I cannot forget that laughter. <laughs> God bless you, oh, it, is, it is well because, like we say, if we come in and just talk, people think you are being emotional. So we go into the book, the Bible. It was the King James Version. This is the closest to over to 98% with the original Aramaic and Hebrew text and Greek text. So nobody can come and dispute, say, no, we are giving our personal opinion. That's why I was telling, so I was asking Sister Sonia, I said, is it the Holy Spirit said, yes, Holy Spirit? We want to know, is it a doctrine of CHMI or we are coming from the Bible? That's why it's very important for people to be rooted in the word. It's not about what you think. The second Peter chapter one, verse 20 and 21 say, prophet is not subject to private interpretation. What you think, nobody really cares. You have got your opinions, I have got my opinions. So I cannot come and say, Sister Sonia, this you have got your opinion and my opinion. But what brings you and me together? Let's go into the Bible and see. That's why I said I cannot bring one Bible verse and start condemning anybody. We cannot do it. It becomes unfair. Praise the Lord. So I think we can round up if we don't have contributions. I think we have taken most of the questions through the scriptures because they become... If you read one script, a person will say, ah, no, I don't understand. So we started where it came from, from Leviticus. We went to Deuteronomy. We come into what the Lord was saying. So when we do it, we take the argument. If, if you have got a very well good argument, you can come and try to argue. But we are holding the Bible, not one Bible verse. So we can see. Huh? You want to add? Read. Read for the microphone now.
Praise the Lord. There is this other Bible verse in 1 Corinthians 10 from verse 27. 1 Corinthians 10 from verse 27. I read in Jesus' name. If any of those who do not believe invite you to dinner and you desire to go, eat whatever is set before you, asking no question for conscience sake. But if anyone says to you, this was offered to idols, do not eat it for the sake of one is who told you, and for conscience sake, for the earth is the Lord's, and all its fullness. Amen. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, praise the Lord. So mm -hmm. we have seen the Bible. Mama D has brought with one, the Dachimi has brought another. So that's the only thing that we wanted to be sure that when we are coming, especially if you want to, don't get into foolish arguments. The second Timothy chapter one, verse 20 and 20, the one that is a foolish argument, they refuse. First Peter chapter three, verse 15 allows me to defend the gospel which I'm preaching. So I can go into the scriptures and allow, and tell you where I get the permission to preach. But I also refuse foolish questions if I think they bring dispute. So it's very important. Because when people come now like this, they will come and say, no, no, it's not in the Bible. So we will start where you are basing your argument from. And ending with the Lord himself saying, that's why Peter came in and was saying, Peter, don't say anything that I have made this unholy. That's why I asked the sister Sonia, say, four footed, did you see cows? They say, yes. Did you see pigs? They said, yes. Did you see <laughs> God? They said, yes. They said four footed. So it means anything. And they said, Peter said, unclean. And when we read from Leviticus, it said, a pig is unclean. So we knew it was one of it. So he said, why are you calling it unclean when I made it clean? So the Bible, when you look at it, this is how we usually get to interpret and come up with the biblical positions. That's why I said this is what we call the law of interpretation. You don't just wake up and start saying, throwing the Bible first and say, no, you see, say, God is going to punish you. God is going to, we come in and start accusing. It's not about being emotions. We don't need emotions in the Bible. We just come and bring the Bible first. They interpret themselves. Don't bring one. If you bring 15, a person before you know it, they said, ah, okay, I think I get it. Instead of just coming, condemning, condemning, condemning. Yeah, if you don't want to, you're not going to heaven. It's not about, there are people who are not eating the Muslim, are they going to heaven? Say, no, why? They don't have Christ. So salvation is about faith in Christ. It's not that meat that you are busy condemning. No, your character is the meat that you should change. Not say, I don't this, I don't this. Let your speech be with grace and seasoned with salt. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And I tell you, please pray for us in the round up. It's well. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Let's just begin to go.